The biggest uh, talking point today is Rahul Gandhi's disqualification and should he just have apologized to the court and put an end to it. The Congress party says that this is petty politics but is it, what do the Congress leaders believe? I have with me uh, the Congress MP Karthi Chidambaram joining us today. Thank you so much for joining Hello. us. Uh, first of all, of course, want to ask you, you know, on Rahul Gandhi's disqualification, there are so many questions around it. Many people believe Rahul Gandhi should have just apologized or at the outset they ask why isn't that the Congress party even appealing to the High Court? See, you shouldn't uh, view this uh, disqualification as some sort of a routine legal proceeding which led to a disqualification. That would be completely erroneous. You need to look at this disqualification, in my opinion, in the reverse order. In fact, there is a reverse engineering process which has taken place. The BJP wanted to deprive Rahul Gandhi the platform of, the pla of parliament wanted to prevent him from saying what he was saying, prevent him from raising whatever question he was raising in parliament. They wanted to prevent him from doing that. In order to prevent him from doing that, they needed to deprive him of his membership. Okay. In order to deprive him of his membership, they needed a trigger which would lead to a disqualification, which is a two-year sentence. Okay, but the BJP in order says... To, listen to me. In order to get a two-year sentence, they needed a trial which would lead to a two-year sentence. In order to have a trial, they needed a legal case. In order to have a case, they needed a complaint. Okay. So basically, after Mr. Rahul Gandhi's speech, particularly on the motion of thanks to the president and his uh, subsequent speeches in England, the BJP went shopping. So the BJP, okay. in order to get a trigger to which, will, which will cause a disqualification, which was a two-year sentence, went shopping for a legal proceeding which could lead to this. And in, never in the history of India has a political speech or for a, for, a, for a speech of slander has anybody been given a sentence of two years. This this judgment will never be sustained in the higher court. We know that. Okay. So the BJP has, has reverse engineered this process, reactivated a dormant case in okay. order to get the trigger which would lead to disqualification of Rahul Gandhi. So we can't view this as some sort of a uh, case which has always been going on and that case some, some, somehow came to some sort of logical uh, conclusion mm -hmm. and that conclusion led to a sentence and the sentence led to a, a disqualification. You must look at the other way around. The desired okay. result was a disqualification. So in order to get the desired result, you needed a trigger. The trigger was the two-year sentence. In order to get the two-year sentence, you needed a trial. You were shopping for a trial. which then you, you reactivated okay. a trial which was dormant. Okay. For that, you needed a, 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 a case and a complaint, which was a 2019 okay. complaint. So in, in the statements that have been made by the Congress leaders, uh, uh, including Malikarjun Kharge, like I mentioned, they have said that this was a statement that was made in Kolar. Why bring it to Gujarat? In fact, he seemed to be questioning the judiciary. That's what the BJP has said. When he says that the judges were changed, we know why it was brought to Gujarat. There's a reason why it was brought there. The Congress, top Congress leaders See, have said this. Is this questioning of the judiciary no. one? And secondly, you're saying this is not going to stand legal scrutiny. Then why not go to a high court? It will court? happen. It's not high court. It has to go to the, from the magistrate court. It will go to the sessions mm. court. It will go to the sessions court. It's 170 page judgment in Gujarati. Mm. So people will have to translate it. And they will file it. It's only been a week. It was on the 23rd order where the 30th. And I'm sure certified copies of the judgment only gave, I don't know when they got the actual certified copy. While well, you are in the business of breaking news, courts only need, uh, I can't go to court with a breaking news. I need to go to court with a, uh, with a certified copy of the judgment and then with also with official translated uh, copies. So I do not know when they all got that. These appeals will be filed. Appeals will be filed in the appropriate forum. Is there a delay in the... There is no appeal? delay at all. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I, I, I mean, I wish the judiciary worked in the pace in which you think it should be working. You can't get a judgment judgment one day, appeal the next day and then, then move on. That doesn't work that way. People need to apply their minds. They will find uh, reasons to appeal and the appeal will be filed. The Congress party has got a strong legal team mm -hmm. and the legal team will definitely and Mr. Rahul Gandhi himself would have personally a strong legal team. They will definitely exercise all the legal liberties which are available to him. Okay. On the question of whether Rahul Gandhi should have just apologized or uh, you know at least given a clarification that this is not something he meant for the entire community because in the Jharkhand High Court as well in similar arguments, he had said he didn't mean it for the entire community, See, he meant it only for the individuals. Why done, not issue a clarification? What he should have done, what he should have done, I'm not qualified to answer for him. But all the, um, the point I'm trying to make is, if you listen to his speech, mm. he does not refer to a community. He does not. That If anybody says that in his speech in 2019 in Kolar, he was referring to a community, that is completely erroneous. But he and says, it why is are all the thieves called Modi? It is only referring to a name. He is not referring to a community. To be, to be honest with you, I do not believe, and I mean, I'm, 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 
willing to be corrected. Though those three names he mentioned, I am sure they don't belong to the same community. I am sure those three names he mentioned in his speech do not belong to the same community. So there was never a direct, indirect reference to a community at all. There was only, there was only reference to three names who coincidentally might be the same, but it was never a reference to a community. So this entire proceedings is mischievous. To say that he referred to a community is mischievous. And I, I, I'm willing to be corrected if somebody can actually categorically tell me whether those three names he mentioned actually belong to a community. So Maybe why, does, why didn't Rahul Gandhi issue that clarification that I didn't mean I said it for the community I mean, at large? I think it was apparent, but if you listen to his speech repeatedly, you will realize that he is not, he's not referring to a community. That itself was a complete mischievous interpretation. Okay. On, do you think the Congress party has picked up a wrong battle when it says that, you know, this is a case in Kolar, it should not have been taken to Gujarat or something like that? Because I, I just want to bring out some facts because you mentioned it. Uh, a UP court had pronounced Vikram Saini, who was a BJP MLA, guilty of writing and had convicted him. In Karnataka as well, the BJP MLA Olekar has been convicted of uh, corruption uh, by a court. So, you know, no, when no, you... Corruption. Yes, no, when no, no, you raise see, these questions on see, a court, when you talk about defend, this is, you know, let's not talk about a, don't don't equate a corruption case with a, with a case of slander. See, tomorrow somebody who's watching this interview between you and me could watch it on YouTube in Alaska, could be watch it in somewhere in uh, in Arunachal Pradesh, and they can get offended and file a defamation case. I don't reside in uh, Arunachal Pradesh. This interview is not given in Arunachal Pradesh. No, but the Chief Justice of India has said there's no political pressure whatsoever. And Nobody has suggested political pressure. I'm only we are only taking the whether the cause of action arose in Gujarat in Surat. Am I, I am I as a as, as aren't uh, aren't we allowed to say whether the cause of action arose in Surat or not? Speech given in uh, uh, in in uh, in Kolar. How does the cause of action arise in Surat? That's exactly what we're questioning, and that's a legitimate question that will be answered in the if the if the magistrate believed that he had uh, jurisdiction, that will be challenged now in a higher court now. Okay. So, when Rahul Gandhi addressed the media after that, he said, uh, I am not Savarkar, I am Rahul Gandhi, I am not going to apologize. So, it's clear that he is not going to apologize, but the fact that he mentioned Savarkar did not seem to be going to, well, not just with BJP, but even Uddhav Thakre. It's, it's natural, there are regional parties, everybody will have their own heroes and people they look up to. We can't expect everybody to be completely aligned with us and everything. If all of us align, just because we are in a political alliance and we align ourselves on every issue, we might as well all merge into one political party. I am in the DMK in Tamil Nadu. Mm -hmm. I mean, the DMK and I, uh, and we don't necessarily uh, align on every issue. For example, in the issue of uh, of releasing the the, uh, the convicts in the Rajiv Gandhi assassination case, the Congress party and the DMK uh, differ. The DMK welcomed the release, whereas the Congress party has in fact gone on a review to the Supreme Court. So on every issue, okay. and in every issue, particularly emotive issues, we cannot expect, on even on policy issues, we can't expect parties to be completely aligned. There will be differences, but we are coming together for a larger purpose. We will have to see whether the larger purpose is is, is, is aligned and will be there. But in other issues, there will be differences and that's natural. Okay. Is there a talk within the Congress that, you know, Rahul Gandhi should apologize? Do you think he should just apologize? No, no. This is, first of all, a reverse engineered frivolous case which should have never been, the complaint itself should not have been entertained. I mean, this is, if this was not the uh, pretext, the BJP would have found another pretext, another trigger to cause this uh, to this uh, disqualification. Mm -hmm. They were looking for a, for a, for a trigger to, to do a disqualification. So I really don't know. I, 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 this is not a case to, because apologize for what? He has not referred to a community. Okay. Okay. I also want to ask you about, uh, some within the Congress party also feel that Rahul Gandhi should be a little cautious about what he says. Uh, because any work that's done on ground gets eroded completely by the statements that he makes. Whether it is the statements that he made in the United Kingdom or whether his recent statements on Savarkar. Is there a talk within uh, no, Congress I, party I not, with the top I, leaders? I have not thinking? heard anything like that. And secondly, for the, as far as the speeches given in the United Kingdom, it is again absurd to say that domestic issues should not be ever spoken in an international forum. Today with the world of technology, what is an international forum and what is a domestic forum? I mean, you, I could speak on YouTube from here and can't, uh, that means I, I can't speak about international issues because I'm domiciled in India. And every forum given to, a, to anybody in public life will be utilized to speak of issues which concern them. So I don't, I don't even understand this criticism at all. Everybody will use every forum. But it's not just talking about India. He had said that, uh, you know, he's surprised that looking at the state of democracy in India, uh, other countries like US and the Europe are silent about it. So this... No, no, I don't think, I think are again, Mr. I don't think there was... Is, uh, he, definitely, democracy is diminishing in India. Democracy is not merely 
for the citizens to have the right to vote, to elect uh, a person in the first past the vote system, and, to, and then the party which has the maximum legislators or MPs forming a government. That alone is not democracy. But why do you Demo say democracy? Democracy is, 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 a, is a much more holistic thing. You must have an independent judiciary, you must have a free press, you must have the right to express yourself, there must be dissent, and there must be space for, for others to also to exist. But that space is, is, is definitely shrinking in India. UAP is, uh, is, is applied on activists. So, so democracy is definitely diminishing, and, that, and, and, I, and I subscribe okay. to the view as well. I do not okay. just believe just because we have the right to vote, and we are electing a government uh, which, which has the majority, that, does not, that alone does not make the, the democracy. I mean, Hitler was, was elected in, a, in, a, in Germany in 1933. Putin gets elected with 90% or 95% of the vote all the time. Erdogan gets elected all the time. So just because you have elections doesn't mean that but those countries are all democratic. Is it fair to make that kind of a of comparison course, with a course, country like India, course. which is democratic? Of like I mentioned, the Chief Justice himself has said that there is. I you agree. said uh, the judiciary uh, is also also under pressure. Agree, the Chief Justice of the country look at, look at the kind says of, that there's no Look pressure. at the kind of harassment people who have differing views face in this country. Look at the kind of long processes they have to go when they're when they're in, they, they, when they're arrested for pre-trial uh, cases. So it's if, while well, I have all respect for the Chief Justice, but 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 democracy and democratic institutions are eroding in India. I mean, this is not a view I alone have. There are many people who are not necessarily aligned with my political philosophy. Also have. Okay. In fact, many in the BJP say that the Congress Party says that democracy is eroding in India because they fail to get any support. So does you know See, lack I'm of support for the Congress Party means not, that means democracy is not no just elections. Elections is just one facet of democracy. Democracy is about me to. I mean, I mean, today, why do why do all politicians or anybody even in the media only speak on WhatsApp? Why are they not making regular calls? Because you're afraid that somebody uh, is listening to your calls. You always want to use encrypted apps to speak to each other. That is the sense okay. of, uh, of 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 uh, that's the, the sense of pal pal palpable fear. Gandhi, and the BJP responded to it. He said that there was Pegasus on my phone. Uh, many Intel uh, uh, officials called me and told me don't talk on the phone because we are recording your calls. This is what Rahul Gandhi said in the UK. The BJP responded to it and said that the top court of the country, the Supreme Court, has looked at it. Why didn't he give his phone? Every if he had that kind of every doubt? totalitarian regime in this world will operate with a veneer of judicial sanction. Everything is legal. I mean, a raid on a person is legal. Incarceration is legal because there is a judicial sanction. You're doing, you're doing a raid because somebody is authorizing the raid. You're, you're arrested and you're sent for judicial custody or, or to police custody because there is a judicial order. Just because it's happening okay. uh, with, with, under the cloak of a, uh, the veneer of a judicial sanction does not make it moral. I'll come back to the foreign intervention uh, part of it that the BJP is saying that the Congress leaders are calling for foreign intervention. Rahul Gandhi made that statement when he made that in the UK. He did not. He said, he no, did uh, not. one second, like, allow me to finish. He said that uh, I'm surprised that looking at the uh, what's happening in the country, uh, countries like US and Europe are silent. In fact, just 52 hours after that, he changed his statement and he said that this is an internal matter of India. So there must have been a change in his thought process. But immediately after that, now we have Digvijay Singh who welcomes a statement by Germany and says we are glad Germany has taken note of what's happening. See, let it be very clear. The categorical position of the Congress party and my position personally is that nobody is expecting any intervention from any other sovereign entity into Indian political affairs. Hmm. While we highlight what's happening in India, we don't expect anybody to do, do anything about it. We will fight our political battles here. Uh, however, uh, high the odds are stacked up against us, we'll fight the political battles here. The Congress party does not expect any intervention from any external force into our democratic process, however complicated and however challenging it is in India. Okay, so when statements like this are made by the... But that's been Singh. clarified by the official spokesman of the party. I mean, diplomats of every country will always keep note of what's happening in other country. I'm sure Indian diplomats are keeping note of what's happening in Israel. There are far-reaching uh, events happening in Israel right now. I'm sure the Indian ambassador there and the Indian attaches is there are, no, are, are, are noticing what's happening in Israel. I'm sure the Indian ambassador in Iran is noticing what's happening in Iran. I'm sure the Indian diplomats which are, who are highly trained and highly skilled people will be noticing what's happening there. In the same way, the other country's diplomats posted in India will also be noticing what's happening in India. That's all. It does not mean that uh, they are going to intervene or we are going to intervene in the affairs of Israel or, uh, or Iran or any other country. I mean, that's the job of the diplomat is to, is okay. to notice but what's happening Germany in the country. But when Germany standards of judicial independence and fundamental democratic principles should apply to Rahul Gandhi and Digvijay Singh says we welcome this statement. See, if the German diplomat has a view, that view is for his, his or her government. 
that is a view which they are conveying there they are not here telling us or we are not seeking their endorsement or support in any manner okay. the view of a german diplomat is for his or her government okay so um, you know coming back to whether rahul gandhi statements whether it is on savarkar whether it is these political speeches do you think uh, the congress party finds itself in a spot when rahul gandhi makes these statements not at all as i told you a, a regional party and a national party or two regional parties may not necessarily align on every issue there not will be different not just on savarkar even if he makes a statement abroad uh, you say that because of bharat jodo you've seen immense support i'm but glad that the notice the i'm glad that the, the, the i'm glad that the, 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 the media is paying the congress i'm glad that the media is paying such close attention to congress uh, uh, congress's pronouncements and speeches that's all you're just reading too much into it we have categorically you're, you're you're splitting hairs you're asking me the same question again and again we do not expect and neither do we, do we uh, want any kind of intervention from any any other any other international body or uh, nation into affairs of us we are more than capable of handling affairs however skewed the tables uh, the, the situation is here okay all right also want to ask you uh, as yesterday prime minister modi had visited uh, the new parliament building uh, we saw a tweet from jairam ramesh saying this is a colossal waste of money uh, this was the tweet that he made and uh, whether it is a bhumi pujan of the parliament uh, whether it was the national emblem being unveiled or now the surprise check by the prime minister so it seems like the opposition of the congress party gets very riled up as this is what the bjp says that the this is a project that was mooted under the upa government now that the work is being done why is there such objection to it see the fact is now that the parliament is the new parliament is is already getting built and it will be ready so so be it there's no point agitating about it but what we really need is we want we need a functioning parliament we don't want a parliament which is has gridlock because the government refuses to allow the opposition to speak while we will go to a good new hardware but we need to put good software there where are the soft skills where is the space for the for the opposition to speak even that's where we should be focusing on you know in in parlance it said in political parlance it said the opposition must have its say while the government can have its way here the government doesn't allow us to speak maybe in the new parliament i mean while the prime minister is paying such great attention to the to the physical infrastructure i hope he pays attention to the to the to the softer infrastructure which is needed to allow the opposition to have its say I mean, we must allow Parliament to function. I hope you know this. This building brings better vibes, and we actually have a functioning Parliament where you will allow opposition, my opposition, to raise the issues of the day. The government, with its majority, can always win that argument over a vote. But you must allow us to speak. But you simply don't allow us to speak. We wanted to raise the issue of price rise. We are not allowed to raise it. We wanted to raise the issue of farmers. We are not allowed to raise it. We wanted to issue the, raise the issue of Pegasus. We are not allowed to raise it. We wanted to raise the issue of this uh, Hindenburg report on Adani. We are not allowed to raise it. So we are, we are not allowed to raise any issues. I don't. I if 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 this the same gridlock is going to continue there, the same attitude of the government is going to continue there in new parliament. It's meaningless. I hope in the new parliament they'll have a new attitude and they'll give space for the opposition to speak up. Whenever we wanted to suspend the normal business of the house and raise an issue of importance, it has been disallowed. so where is the space for us to raise issues this routine uh, functioning of parliament of debating a bill or raising issues on zero hour you know 377 that's fine but when we have important issues to raise the how this is the, the uh, we are not allowed to raise them as i gave you enough examples of that the farmers bill the uh, demonetization uh, to talk about the uh, the gst we are not allowed to talk about any of the things which matter to the people the prices of petrol okay. now the hindenburg report we are not allowed to raise it pegasus so where is the please statistically prove me wrong that uh, by 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 listing out how many adjournment motions were allowed okay all right but when you say these are issues that matter to the people uh, there's one video where uh, uh, mr chidambaram your father is saying that we are not getting the kind of support that uh, we want for rahul gandhi it's been interpreted as that bjp says this is congress party admitting that we are not getting any support on ground we right. want people to come but they are not coming out mass public protest is not something which people willingly come and do today people internalize the message given to them protest by party cadre is is in a way not necessarily spontaneous every time and it is it is something which has to be organized and public participation in these protests is getting weaker and weaker or throughout the country public okay. a political people do not come and protest unless it's an emotive issue which concerns them particularly in that area but there are but, issues but like caa and farmers and there, there certain certain issues people come or concern will come there but but other issues people do not come just because they don't come to the streets does not mean that they're not paying attention to it. communication need not just just only mean uh, street presence 
Okay. Uh, like you mentioned, this video, this was tweeted by uh, the BJP IT cell chief Amit Malviya. Immediately after this video where he said that Chidambaram has admitted that the, uh, Rahul Gandhi is not getting that kind of support. He also tweeted a video where you are in the parliament, Rahul Gandhi is just entering and he says immediately after Ch Ch Chidambaram said Rahul Gandhi is not getting that support, uh, here's Rahul Gandhi snubbing his own MP. I mean, Amit Malviya is actually a reincarnation of Goebbels. I think the optics are very misleading and it's much ado about nothing. Okay, so there isn't anything. There's nothing. Yes, yes, but yes, within yes. the Congress party, is Rahul Gandhi either losing support or not other at all? I mean, let me be very categorically clear. While Mr. Karge is the president of the party, emotively, the average card-carrying member of the party identifies himself very closely with the Nehru Gandhi family. That is the political and social reality. So are you saying they can never be separated from Congress? That is not necessarily only true of the Congress party. It is true of almost all political parties in India. Right from national conference in Kashmir to the DMK in Tamil Nadu. Political, there are families. That is a social reality of social political reality of South Asia. Most political parties have a family which is the centrality and the fulcrum of the political party. That is a social reality. That might be a situation which will evolve in 50 years, 25 years and change. But right now, if you look at Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, that is the uh, social political reality of, of families having a predominant role in the centrality of political parties. That's not something unique to the Congress, okay. even though we are unfairly always uh, targeted with this, uh, with this jibe saying you're always around a family or something like that. That's something which is true of, of say, TDP, that's true of BRS, it is true, true of uh, JDS in Karnataka, it is true of the Shiv Sena, it is true of the Akalis, it is true of the National Conference, it is true of uh, PDP, it is true of uh, SP. It is true of a Trinamul Congress. Just because it's true no, of the it is, other parties. It is true. It is not, it is, in fact, that is a rule rather than an exception. Please understand, in okay. India, that is a rule rather than an exception. There, ex there are exceptions. I agree there are exceptions okay. to this. But there are very few. Uh, and the exceptions in India, in, to my recollection, are the BJP at the top level, the ADMK now, hmm. and, this, uh, and the communist parties. That's all. Okay, but That's all. They are the only exceptions. No other. They, they, this is the rule. The rule is uh, political parties are uh, sort of uh, are, are function around a dominant family. That is the that is the rule, not the exception. So does that undermine Mr. Kharge's position? Because you're not saying Congress all. is it's impossible to imagine the Congress without it the is, Gandhi family. I, I mean, see, there's no point in denying the reality. The reality is they they hold a special place. Emotively, they hold a special place with the Congress cadre and that is a reality as the DMK cadre uh, are emotively connected to the Karunanidhi family. But and I, what about the power equations? The Congress, the, Mr. Mr. Karge is a seasoned politician. He's been there for 50 plus years in, in active politics and he knows how to operate this and the Congress has always been a collective. But while within the collective, there is a centrality of, uh, of an emotive glue. That's all you must say. And that is true of, as I, I, I gave you a list of political parties. That is a rule in India, not the exception. There are only two or three political parties which have bucked this trend. Okay. All right. So, um, lastly, as we wrap up, I just want to ask you, uh, yet again, we are seeing another session of parliament being washed out completely. And this happens time and again. Uh, your, this time around, it's been because of Rahul Gandhi's disqualification in the protest. No, not at all. The uh, disqualification happened only happened now. And the opposition no. asking uh, for a probe into the Adani issue. Uh, BJP has said Rahul Gandhi should apologize for his statements made abroad. Because of all of these issues, Parliament has not been able to function yet again. Yes, true. It is really the onus on making Parliament function is with the government. If they give the space for the opposition to raise the issues that we want to raise, Parliament will function very smoothly. Okay. In fact, this, is, this, this, this time we saw there were more vociferous protests from their side than our side in the initial part of the session. In fact, where, as I told you, I asked you up front, please give me the statistics where they have allowed adjournment motions. Okay. They don't allow any issue we want to raise to be raised and that's why there is gridlock. Okay, so no question of Rahul Gandhi's apology on the Modi statement and on the statement that he made abroad? There's nothing to apologize. In my, in, in my opinion, there's nothing to apologize on both counts. Okay, all right. Mr. Karthi Chidambaram, thank you so much for thank joining you. us here. So there you have it, the Congress MP taking all the questions, the hard-hitting questions and what the Congress's stand is on the issue.